for joining the, um, the pre-marketing webinar for digital marketing, customer engagement, social media, and planning and analytics. Sorry, I'm having a bit of a mouthful there. The pre-course information webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. As you, as we wait for other um, folks to uh, uh, arrive, as it were, if you could go to chat, you should find the chat um, option as part of your toolbar select all panelists and attendees and just let me know who you are and from where you are um, joining us from i'm my name's alex brown i'm in the uk in the southwest tip in cornwall um, i am a course leader for this particular program hence why i am hosting this um, pre-course webinar um so go to chat welcome aria ravi from florida again Select all panelists and attendees. That way, everybody can see you. Melissa, welcome. Um, can't believe you are in Cornwall. So jealous. I'm a journalist, British in New York City. Excellent. Yes, you should be jealous. I am in Cornwall. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, select all panelists and attendees. So welcome, Melissa. Um, Jamie, welcome from Milford, Connecticut. Excellent. M Melanie, welcome in Canada. Again, select all panelists and attendees. We've got a nice representation so far from North America. Stefan, welcome from Germany. Mia, welcome again from New York City. Excellent. Select all panelists and attendees in the two fields so everybody can see. Sebastian, welcome. Swedish in New York City. Kelly, welcome. Long Island, New York. Lots of New York representation. Takio from sunny Miami, USA. Welcome. Brian, welcome from New Jersey. Uh, grew, grew up in Connecticut. Very good. Select all panelists and attendees. Bahrain, Manel, welcome. Fantastic. Ilyana, again from New York City. Welcome. Um, G G A Y. Sorry if I mispronounced that. From Singapore. Very welcome. Melanie, um, great. Um, from Canada. All panelists and attendees. I appreciate that. Amy from Malaysia. Welcome. Yana from Tel Aviv. Shalom. Um, again, select all panelists and attendees. Sieg from Indonesia. Charles from um, New York City, again, born in Australia. Florence, welcome from Argentina. Um, we'll just wait maybe one more minute as folks arrive. So as you arrive, please go to um, the chat. Let us know from where you're tuning in from. Brian, very welcome from New Jersey. Um, Selecting all panelists and attendees, very good. Marina, um, Brazilian, living in Florida. Excellent. Christelle in Beirut or from Beirut, Lebanon. I hope you are safe, um, but please select all panelists and attendees. Sharon from Australia. Um, again, hopefully everybody also through COVID-19 is able to stay safe. Um, okay, it seems like things are slowing down in terms of the number of um, folks joining us. So I think I will kick on as it were. A, a very good. Um, Natalie um, from Switzerland in Lausanne. Very welcome. Again, when you use the chat, select all panelists and attendees. As we go through this webinar, if you have questions, and some will have questions, please post them into the Q&A. Um, that way, if I don't address the question through the, the remainder of the webinar, it'll give me a chance to look at the Q&A at the end and make sure I do address all your um, questions. So Q&A for questions, chat for chat, and on the chat, select all panelists and attendees. So I will stop looking at the chat and um, well, I'll have one more quick look. Um, welcome Alex, great name in New York City, fantastic. Um, again, select all panelists and attendees. So there we go, we are now going to kick off. This is what we're gonna do over the next hour. We'll be done at the top of the hour. Um, we're going to do a little bit of an introduction in terms of the faculty, um, a little bit about you, or at least the folks taking this program if you decide to join, and Emeritus. Um, a little bit about the program overview, um, which will leave us some time for the Q&A for questions that I don't address um, effectively in um, the webinar. So this program, Digital Marketing Strategy, is based off of work from Professor David Rogers. And the core aspects of the content for this course, which um, are several, well, lots of modules of several video 
um, clips um, are all from um, Professor David Rogers. Absolutely fantastic uh, material. He's the author of two books um, that are related to this subject matter, the Digital Transformation Playbook, but more importantly, the network is your customer, five strategies to thrive in a digital age. And those five strategies, which I'll go into detail on each um, later in this webinar, form the core component of this course. And I would advocate uh, the distinguishing characteristics of this course, i.e. why you would take this particular course from Columbia Business School versus another digital marketing strategies course from another leading um, university. Um, um, Professor Rogers is a, a faculty of the executive education at Columbia Business School, which is a top tier business school um, in the world, I'm sure. Uh, many of you are, are aware of Columbia, especially we've got lots of folks here from New York City, right? Um, and he's a world-renowned speaker, um, does a variety of research in this in the subject and so on and so forth. Um, so he's absolutely um, at the very top of, 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 of this in terms of content. Um, now, how the program works is, whilst Professor David Rogers is content forms the core aspects of this course. Um, and Professor Rogers appears in a guest webinar, so you can talk to him directly. Um, the course is sort of managed by what we call course leaders. Um, and we serve as your tutors, essentially answering your questions, running particular sessions, and so on and so forth. Um, and we sort of help you navigate this program over the 10 weeks. I'm a course leader. Um, I've actually had this role on this particular course now since August 2018. Um, so I've served on this course maybe on 12 or 13 or 14 occasions at this point. I've taught digital marketing for more than 20 years. Um, and for those of you that remember what digital marketing might have been like 20 years ago, if you're old like me with no hair, um, you'll realize that was the very early stages of digital marketing as a field. In fact, when I first taught it, um, I was one of only two faculty worldwide teaching the subject matter. Um, so I began teaching before Google was born, Apple and so on and so forth. I've worked on several dot-com projects as an entrepreneur. Um, my focus um, in terms of digital marketing strategies is sort of building and nurturing online community and so forth. That's where my interests lie, et cetera. I'm joined as a course leader by Josh Whiten, who has also a long history in the digital marketing space, um, has, has worked on you know, several interesting projects from a consulting standpoint, has done some um, very smart things. Josh is absolutely fantastic, I have to say that, as is Demetrius, who is another course leader. So basically, and you could look at um, Demetrius's um, credentials, um, outstanding credentials also, the three of us serve as your tutors um, through, through the program. And you'll notice across the top, it says Demetrius, Lego, Josh, Hilton, um, me, Ikea. We run case studies on these individual brands as we cover those five um, strategies, um, of, of dig uh, digital strategies based on five customer behaviors from Professor Rogers. So that's sort of how the course um, is managed. And, and again, I'll go into a bit more detail on that. Um, in a little bit. And then our fourth course leader is Michael Tominaga, and he helps you, nurtures you through the process of the simulation exercises we use for this course. So we have a search engine marketing simulation exercise where it mimics running Google ad campaigns. It's absolutely fantastic. And we have a social media advertising simulation um, um, for you to do, which is further along into the course. And Michael is your go-to resource to enable you to do be successful um, in, in that regard. Um, so this, this course is served by four course leaders. Um, okay, a little bit about who participates and Emeritus itself. Um, Emeritus, just a sort of big, big picture thing. What we do at Emeritus, and I work for Emeritus, is um, we work with top tier universities um, around the world, several in North America, including Columbia Business School, which is obviously the relevant one in this um, context, as well as 
um, business schools in other parts of the world. So in, in the UK, London Business School, Cambridge, um, Imperial College, and so on and so forth. Um, we have participants, um, students, as it were, executive education students from all around the world. And I would say that's one huge advantage with online executive education. When you are um, discussing course materials and addressing course materials with folks from all around the world with very different experiences and some different levels of experience. I always find it fascinating when I'm learning about, for example, really interesting content marketing examples coming out of, let's say, Singapore or India or, 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 or China or wherever it might be, because those are regions I'm not as familiar with, um, for example. Um, so we at Emeritus, we work with over 30,000 students from across the world. And the other interesting aspect is the depth of work experience. So there are folks that take these courses that have from one to five years of experience. These are the mobile first generation. They only know digital through a mobile phone in essence, or at least they first access digital through a mobile phone, I should say. And that goes all the way around to the, you know, folks with more than 26 years experience, again, older folks like myself. And we've seen the evolution of digital um, over several years. You know, we, 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 we worked through the dot-com bubble, the dot-com burst. We've, we've, we've known what search engine marketing was like before Google came along. Um, and so on and so forth. And I think it's that blend of, of conversation that makes a program like this um, super, super interesting. So um, lots, of, lots of quality in terms of um, the students. And, you know, quite honestly, when, when I look at student profiles, um, we, you know, typical for a course like this, there'll be an introduction thread that each of you introduce yourself so you can see um, you know, the, the, the types of people that you're, you're in the classroom with. And I start reading them and I'm like, yep, that person's smarter than me. Yep, that person's better experienced than me. Yep, this, yes, that, an absolutely fantastic, um, typically fantastic group of, um, of, of, of students. So let's talk about the course more particularly. Why take this course? And this is just a standard cartoon you'll see, but it sort of gets to the point. What's the big campaign idea? We're going digital. Facebook, YouTube, a mobile app, Pinterest, TikTok. Um, who are we going to, what are we going to do in all these channels? I don't know, we'll figure it out later. Um, what a program like this will do will allow you to take a much more strategic approach to your digital marketing strategy. Um, so hopefully you won't be saying we'll figure it out later, but you'll have a strategic plan in place before you um, jump onto these different channels and, and do different, um, different things. Right. Um, so <clears throat> our learning is designed for completion. So one of the things that we're quite proud of actually at Emeritus is the, this completion rate. Course completion rates are above, typically above 85% um, for this particular course. Um, so what does this course um, comprise? Um, so I go through each of these little green boxes, uh, quite cute content from leading academic institutions. So again, in your case, this is content from Columbia Business School. So it would be like taking a class at Columbia Business School. Um, guest lectures. So we have webinars or, or we, we have outside folks providing um, um, webinars on topics are very, you know, current topics and so on and so forth. And again, I think that's a, another huge value for a program um, like this. Now, I'll, I'll look at the different webinar topics um, a little bit later. Bite-sized learning. So um, basically each week um, you'll, you'll receive, and, and we only do it on a weekly basis. We don't provide you all the content at once. We like folks to sort of go through the program um, synchronously like sort of with each other as it were so each week you'll be introduced to a new module of content and that or and maybe there's a couple of weeks you might actually get access to two modules of content but each module might include <coughs> let's say excuse me <coughs> a dozen um videos um of three minutes four minutes in length bite-sized learning each of the videos professor rogers is introducing a particular topic 
<coughs> and within each of the topic, he'll present some kind of case study so you can see how that topic works um, in, in real life. Absolutely fantastic. I think Professor Rogers is, even his, his presentation style is very engaging and, and easy to learn from. Peer-to-peer -peer learning and feedback, we use discussion boards for you to engage and interact with each other. Simulations, we use, again, search simulation, social simulation. I'll go into <coughs> a bit more detail later. Real world case studies. So we look at Professor Rogers' work through the lens of, in my case, IKEA, Hilton Hotels, um, in the case of Josh, and Lego, in the case of Demetrius. Um, Mobile learning application, so you, you, you know, you, there's a mobile app for, for this. Grading and evaluation, this is a pass-fail um, course. Uh, you do the work, you pass, and you do the work in good faith. So you make a, a good faith attempt based off of the content and the materials provided um, for you. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. On completion of a course like this, um, or I should say on completion of your first emeritus course, because you may have already completed an emeritus course, um, you would get access to then the emeritus network, which provides some additional benefits, some additional networking benefits and so forth, as well as tuition assistance for subsequent courses, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a good way to sort of start a, a, a more of a longer term learning journey if that's what you're planning to um, um, accomplish. Um, so let's look at the course um, itself and don't forget as I'm going through all this if you're having any questions um, and, and something I'm saying doesn't make sense please go to the Q&A post those questions I will get to those questions absolutely um, at the um, end if, if not sort of take a sneak peek um, some of the way um, through um, let me just check um, Yes, so um, Shirley, and, and again, uh, use the Q&A for stuff like this, but nevertheless, our lectures live or recorded, they're all live um, in terms of the webinars. The uh, Professor Rogers content, um, the, the videos are recorded, uh, but all the webinars, and I'll go through a list of those um, in a minute, they're, they're live and then they're archived, so you have access to them at a later time if you can't watch them live or if you want to watch them again and so on and so forth. Okay, so basically online, you're gonna, your, your commitment's gonna be about two, or four hour, two to four hours a week. I would say, full disclosure, if you're new to digital marketing, um, in, in the weeks that we're, we're doing simulation exercises, it might be more sort of four to five hours, um, just to sort of get your head around and sort of ease into some, so, 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 some, some of that additional content. So just be aware of that. Um, it's webinars, it's videos, it's assignments, it's simulations, discussions, and debriefs, which I'll focus on what a debrief is um, a little bit later. We cover 14 modules of digital marketing in the 10-week um, period. So we start off the digital advertising mix, looking at the key channels and principles. Then we look at the five behaviors of customers in a digital world and spend several modules and several weeks looking at each of those access, engage, customize, connect, and collaborate strategy. Each of which, again, I'll focus on um, in, in, in a little while. Then we finish up the program with five-step process of planning and executing a digital marketing strategy and looking a little bit into terms of the near future. After completing the course, you do receive a digital certificate um, awarded by Emeritus and Columbia Business School. So you, you get both, uh, both brands um, on your um, digital um, certificate. So on, in terms of the course of objectives, on completing um, this course, you should be able to understand the behaviors of today's customer networks and how to innovate products, services, and communications that customers um, seek. And again, that's a core aspect of what David Rogers teaches. Um, use the concepts, best practices, and tools for digital marketing to lead new initiatives in your organizations. And I would argue um, that you should be doing it concurrently to taking this course if you're currently working. I know, obviously, during COVID-19, some of us aren't in, in full, 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 fully working at this point. But if you are working, you should be able to apply a lot of this um, a lot of the content that we cover in real time in your organization. You'll learn how to plan, implement, and measure 
digital strategies that are integrated with traditional marketing and business practices. Measure is obviously super important. Think strategically to achieve a variety of goals by digital marketing, such as customer acquisition and loyalty, which are clearly two very different things, right? Top of the funnel, customer acquisition. Loyalty after the purchase. How do you get um, loyalty? And then how do you nurture brand advocates that then help with your, what we might call your loyalty loop and so forth? Brand building, market entry, customer insights, and new product um, innovation. Um, you should be able to reach digitally savvy audiences, build deeper customer relationships, and create new markets, products, and um, business models. Okay, before, let me just check the Q&A. Oh, sorry, good morning from Canada. Very good morning, Maria. Thank you. Um, check that. Okay, so let me start off. I do, there is a quick question in the chat. Is there any coverage of the healthcare industry? Um, I'm not sure that we focus specifically on the healthcare industry, and obviously the healthcare industry is slight, is very different in terms of regulation and so on and so forth, but there's oftentimes discussions across all different types of industries, especially in the discussion environments. And you can learn a lot just from the um, yeah, other industries and mapping what happens in one industry to another and so on and so forth. But full disclosure, I do not think we have a particular um, piece of coverage directly on the healthcare um, industry. Okay, the five core strategies and customer networks. I want to spend some time going through each so you get a real clear understanding again of why you would take this particular digital marketing strategy course perhaps um, versus another great um, course from a really strong um, university. It's this idea of David Rogers, these five digital consumer behaviors. You build strategy around how customer behavior is changing. So in terms of the five um, customer behaviors, the first is the access strategy or, or the access behavior. This is the idea that customers um, want to access um, your brand wherever they are, whenever they are in their customer journey. So they could be just thinking about uh, maybe a purchase of your particular product or service, the need arises, they've, they've got a problem or whatever it might be. They might not know your brand at that stage. They might be going to the Google search engine and doing a search and you need to appear, whether that's through search engine optimization or through your search engine marketing and, and sort of Google ads and so on and so forth, right? Um, so that's an example of the access strategy, making sure your, 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 your brand, your SEO strategy is, is top notch, making a mobile strategy so that customers can be reviewing um, your, your content on their mobile, um, mobile device um, whenever they choose to do so. Um, another sort of example of what, what becomes really Important in the access strategy is, is what we call an omni-channel approach um, for how you're making your product or your service available to um, your customers, whether it's in-store, online, it shouldn't matter anymore. The customers should be able to make that choice in terms of how they want to choose access to your brand, your content, your product, your service. So the access element of the um, Five, five core behaviors is obviously fundamental to your success. And then the, 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 the second strategy, the second customer behavior is the engage behavior. This is the cus customer's desire to engage with your content. And in this module, we'll look at aspects like your content marketing strategy. So um, you know, again, with, with, with the brand like IKEA, they have to create a bunch of content, maybe YouTube how-to videos so people can figure out how to assemble their, their furniture and so on and so forth. But they also have a lot of content on how to live in small urban spaces as we have an increasing migration to urban spaces. So um, um, IKEA will, will, will present a bunch of content to sort of solve, solve that problem and so on and so forth. We will also talk about things like how do you create content that potentially could go viral? Um, so how do you create shareable content? This idea of creating content that really instills emotion um, so that people, when they read it or consume it, they, they don't just leave it at that. They think, I've got to share this with my network and so on and so forth. So that's your engaged strategy. The next 
um, customer behavior that we focus on is this idea of customization. Customers want to have a one-to-one -one relationship with brands oftentimes, right? Um, and we know as marketers that the more we can make things personalized, um, the better we, we, we're going to make our offer um, to the individuals. Um, so um, personalization on the one hand is super important. We use brands that, that are obvious for this, like Netflix, the idea that you have a personal set of recommendations when you get your next, you know, you, you next go on to Netflix to decide what you're going to view. We talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning and how all that stuff works. But then we need to counter that with the idea of privacy concerns and and the frustration sometimes as consumers that we have that, you know, maybe I went to a, a website just to look at a pair of shoes or whatever it might be. And then for the next week or two, I'm being chased around the internet on Facebook and, and Google display networks and whatever with ads for that particular shoe, right? So that's called remarketing. But sometimes, again, that can be um, a little bit frustrating um, for customers. So what's the fine balance there um, for a brand? The next customer behavior that we focus on is this idea that customers want to connect with each other rather than directly necessarily with the brand, but want to connect with each other and share experience with the brand. Um, and quite frankly, this is my favorite of the five customer behaviors. It's actually the aspect that I focused on in my own work for the longest time in terms of discussion boards and various other things. And for the current run that we are, um, working on now, we're actually discussing the Connect strategy and I'm preparing for my debrief um, tomorrow. So I read all my students' homeworks and, and yeah, quite frankly, COVID-19 hasn't treated IKEA very well in terms of um, social customer service and, and stuff like that, right? Um, and you've got to think about, you know, how is your brand being discussed? Social listening, um, look at channels like Reddit um, and so on and so forth. So some really fascinating stuff um, there, I think. And then finally, the idea that some customers want to collaborate directly with brands. And, you know, frankly, it would be ridiculous to presume that all your customers want to collaborate and help you build your next widget or whatever it might be. But how do you identify your super fans and those that perhaps will want to collaborate more directly? Um, and personally, I'm looking a little bit more at the online gaming industry and how they do all this stuff, that sort of connect and collaborate, because clearly in that industry, they have a lot of fans that do want to connect and collaborate more directly with, um, with, with, with the brands and, and so forth. But I also think Lego is a great example of a brand that has a platform, Lego Ideas, that allows customers to propose ideas for new Lego sets and then use a sort of gamification strategy, again, something else we talk about in this program, to encourage um, folks to vote on which of these Lego sets Lego should be producing. So some fascinating, fascinating stuff there. But these five um, customer behaviors serve as the core components of this particular program. And I hope you see that, you know, from my own perspective, and again, I've taught digital marketing for more than 20 years, how passionate I am about this particular framework um, in terms of how I think it works and how I think it works so, so well to enable you to think very strategically about your digital marketing uh, programs and the tactics you engage in and so on and so forth. In terms of the specific modules, we start off with um, a nice sort of segue into all this stuff with looking, going from mass marketing to customer um, networks. That idea that marketing used to be, and for those of us old, old enough to remember this, used to be very much command and control from the brand. This is no longer the case. When you've got customers network together and able to connect with each other and wanting to collaborate and so on and so forth, um, brands no longer have that command and control over their own brand message. Right? Um, and it, what it also means is we've got to be, as brands, much more transparent, much more authentic in our communications and so on and so forth. So really interesting stuff. But that's how we start this program in module one. Module two, we'll look at all the different marketing channels or digital channels. And then modules three, four, five, six, 
and seven and eight looks at the um, five different um, um, customer uh, behaviors that I've just discussed um, and so forth. So that's, again, the fundamental core aspect of this particular program. Nine lessons from brand failures. We can always learn from those that have stepped before us. Ten best practices. Um, and then modules 11, looking at metrics. Twelve, looking at planning. 13, looking at additional challenges from an organizational standpoint. And, um, and then 14, looking at stuff into the future. So as I've mentioned on a couple of occasions, we also bring in outside guests um, who are experts in aspects of digital marketing that allow us to make sure that we keep this program um, contemporary and super, super um, current. So these are uh, example of live sessions we've had in recent programs. I'm not saying this is gonna be the exact schedule, of the upcoming program, but if it's not, it's going to be very close to it. So uh, we have actually Josh, um, my, my um, colleague, course leader um, for, and friend, I hope, um, he, he um, runs two of these live sessions because he's an absolute expert in Google. So the introduction to Google AdWords is Josh's and making data-led decisions with Google Analytics is Josh's too. That's later in the course, a little bit further down. Um, we have a couple of sessions run by Michael Tominaga in terms of introducing you to each of the, um, each of the um, simulation exercises. And then success factors for sites and apps, very important. Remarketing and machine learning, again, starting to look at that personalization and the use of, of, of uh, you know, more and more the use of data, big data and machine learning, absolutely fascinating. And um, that's from a colleague of mine, Clark Boyd, um, who, who's just, yeah, a wickedly smart um, individual and, and and a great presenter. You'll see live webinar with Professor Rogers. I think that's always a key aspect of this course. People asking Professor Rogers directly um, questions uh, using Amazon as a digital platform. So we focus on Amazon, Facebook, and Google as the main platforms um, from, from, from a digital marketing standpoint and so forth. So those are the um, live webinars. And again, if you can attend the webinars, absolutely fantastic. If you can't attend, they're all recorded. The slide decks are all made available afterwards. And um, all this content and all your access to this course remains available for a year from the beginning of this program. So um, you can come back you know, after the course has ended within that year and come and review some of these webinars, look at them again, and so on and so forth, if that's what you choose to do. We have several assignments for you to complete to um, get your certificate um, at the end of the course. There are nine in total. Um, assignment one is a nice sort of um, onboarding assignment, I would call it in terms of sort of allowing you to think about customer advocacy, customer networks. You just got to talk about how you've been an advocate. Um, maybe you've left a review or whatever it might be. Then you talk about how a business or your business or the business you work for, it thinks about its customer networks. And then each of the simulations, so you've got assignment two, the search simulation, and assignment um, in, in, in week seven, I guess it is, the social media simulation. Each of those are worth a point. Um, at the end of the course, you've got the metrics and measurement assignments. So that, that talks about um, how do you uh, measure um, your success and so forth from a digital marketing standpoint. And then the five assignments, one for each of the strategies, access strategy, engage, customize, connect, and um, collaborate strategies. For all assignments, you have until the end of the program to complete. We have a schedule within the program and we hope you can stick to that schedule, but to get your certificate, as long as you complete the assignment by the end of the program, then you're gonna be fine. You need to complete seven out of the nine assignments to get your certificate. The five assignments that relate to each of those strategies, access, engage, customize, connect and collaborate, um, if you can get those assignments in on time, they will be reviewed ahead of your course leader debrief 
for that assignment. And again, as I mentioned earlier in, 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 in this presentation, I'm currently preparing for the Connect Strategy debrief, which I, I will undertake tomorrow uh, with, with my strand of students. Absolutely fa fascinating um, feedback and stuff that I'm reading about. Um, again, IKEA's struggle with social customer service at this point. Um, but if you don't get your, um, your strategy assignments in in time for the debrief, as long as you get them completed before the end of the program, they will still qualify so that you can gain your certificate. Each of the course leaders, like myself, Josh, and Demetrius, um, we, as I said, we run case studies. So I do IKEA, um, Demetrius does Lego, and Josh does Hilton Hotels. We host a debrief each week where we examine the, um, the um, strategies for these particular brands um, based on wh whichever assignment is for that particular week. And this week coming up is Connect Strategy. And we use your homework to examine those strategies. Um, so um, quite frankly, the debriefs are my favorite part of the course. They're, that, the, they're the part of the course that I have to work hardest at in terms of preparing for the debriefs, but it's fantastic sort of classroom time, as it were, discussing what these different brands are up to um, in relation to these different um, strategies. Um, so yeah, th this um, slide basically simply talks to that. And that second bullet point, I think, is super, super important. Consider the debrief your classroom time. So you're able to engage, interact one-on-one -on -one with your course leader and get any of your questions answered that you may have um, through, um, through the program. So hopefully that helps. We have discussion topics each week um, and the discussion topics are related to the content for that particular week. So when you talk about, and that's always my favorite, the engaged strategy, we ask you to produce a piece of content or, or identify a piece of content that you think is a good example of um, content marketing. And, um, and, and again, it's great to see these examples from around, um, around the world. Some examples I actually see pretty much every course run. Probably one of my favorite in that regard is the Volvo um, demonstration where Jean-Claude Van Damme is balanced between two big Volvo trucks. And yeah, those of you that have seen that know exactly why that's a fantastic piece of content and therefore it has 100 million views and it's so powerful for the brand Volvo and so on and so forth. But then we look at stuff like Blendtec, um, anyway, I could go on and on about that because I always get very excited about that stuff. But these are the discussion topics. There, there's not one for every week, but it looks like we, we have eight topics over the, the course of the 10 weeks. Again, another aspect of the course are the simulation exercises. I would say two things about these simulation exercises. Um, on the one hand, they can be the most frustrating simply because you, you may have to get up to speed to learn some stuff. Um, and sort of going from zero to one in this case can take a little bit of work. But that said, um, very often we hear the feedback, you know, I was frustrated at the beginning, but I learned so, so much through the simulation exercises. And I think particularly the search marketing simulation exercise is absolutely um, fantastic um, as a learning tool. So hopefully you have the patience to become a smart search marketer and you'll do that through three rounds of the uh, Mimic Pro um, exercise of which Michael Tominaga, remember course leader, will help uh, you nurture you through this um, process. The social media um, simulation, basically, um, e each of these you're working for a different brand. This is, this is a camera shop here trying to sell cameras using search ads. And this is, you're a bag making business and you're advertising your bags online on various channels, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or Pinterest or whatever it might be. Um, but again, you have budgets to play with, free money, and you are judged on your success by how much profit you make in each of these two um, scenarios. So again, Michael Tominaga is um, the course leader to support 
all your activity in this regard. He hosts introductory webinars for each of the simulations. He hosts office hours during the simulations, two I believe for each simulation, um, and answers your questions, support tickets, or discussion threads and so forth. So you should feel there are resources to make sure you're successful in both of these um, endeavors. So <clears throat> a quick thing before I get to uh, uh, sort of finish things up, sort of how did it go? Um, we've recently, we, we've had a, a run of this class um, finished maybe about a month ago, um, a month and a half ago. And one of the things that I really enjoy um, is when our students do get their digital certificates and many of them then post them on LinkedIn and write nice things about their experience in the program. So I pulled a couple of these examples just to sort of illustrate, hopefully, that um, the feedback from the program is actually very good. Um, so, so this is one of them, and I pulled these um, this morning, or, or maybe last night. A very proud moment for me. Thank you, um, Columbia Business School Executive Education and Emeritus um, for the should be great program. This was an amazing experience, whether it was through the invaluable content or whether it was through the practical simulations that were delivered by Stu Kent. An invaluable part of this course is the knowledge and strategies that you get from Professor David Rogers. I enjoyed every part of his lectures and enjoying his book too. The book's not required by the way, but it could serve as an additional supplement and, and identify additional case study material. A big thank you also to, to me, to Michael Tominaga, Clark Boyd, who again is one of the, um, one of the webinar hosts, Demetrius um, Koropis, one of my fellow um, course leaders, and all the other instructors and speakers that have made this course so great. And this is just another one, and I only pulled out two. There are several more examples on LinkedIn. Happy to have completed this certificate. Um, in digital marketing from Columbia Business School, together with Emeritus, based on the research and insights from Professor David Rogers, the Faculty Director um, of Executive Education Programs on Digital Marketing, Digital Business Strategy at Columbia Business School. This course includes powerful and enlightening insights, strategic frameworks and case studies for digital marketing, as well as simulations in search and social media marketing. It's a great course for anyone who wants to formalize their abilities to plan, implement and measure the impact of digital strategies suited to today's customers who are digitally savvy audiences in order to build deep customer relationships and influence the digital path to purchase. Many thanks, David Rogers, as well as Josh Whiten, um, Clark Boyd, myself, Demetrius, Rob Thurner, who's another um, webinar host, and Michael Tominaga, our Stu Kent course leader. So hopefully that gives you a flavor of the feedback that we get um, once people get their certificates. This is a learning platform. It's um, called Canvas. If anyone's familiar with Canvas as a learning platform, um, it's reasonably intuitive, um, hopefully. And in the intro webinar, I give a live sort of demonstration to show folks how to navigate um, the learning platform because the last thing that you want is is to have your learning inhibited by your um, not being able to to successfully negotiate where all the content is and so on and so forth. So hopefully um, we overcome all that in the introductory um, and welcoming webinar. A few of our recommendations, and again, those of you who've left questions, I promise I will get to them. We're very near close to the end now. Um, if you can, stay up to date, block off time to study, make it part of your weekly routine, try to pace yourselves. We do know um, with the COVID-19 situation, just as well as folks with normal lives, working and balancing with family and so forth, um, that uh, it's not always possible to always keep up. We do have some flexibility. You work with your course leader um, if you're needing some additional flexibility and additional um, leeway. Um, absolutely. Interact with your classmates. Take advantage of our discussion platform to share what you're learning with your classmates. Make sure you, you are proactive to reach out to us, our team, if you're falling behind and so on and so forth. And finally, put it into practice. The more you apply course frameworks and lessons, the more you'll um, learn, the more you will um, benefit. 
This is the logistics, um, the program, the course fees, you can pay in full, pay in two installments, pay in three installments. The program begins August 25th. You can apply all the way up until August 24th. I always think that's um, very, very cool. Having worked in the admissions field, I know that short timeline um, can be um, very, very good. This is your digital certificate or a facsimile of what it looks like. Um, we framed it, I'm not quite sure why, because they are digital. Um, you don't actually have a hard copy um, version. And again, here's just all the details. Um, so hopefully that um, makes sense. What I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna go to the Q&A and see what questions have come up and um, try to address some of those questions. Uh, will this course cover digital marketing strategies for China, especially since the digital divide is growing? That's an ap absolutely outstanding question. Um, we don't cover China strategy in um, detail, but as we have students from China in the program and they share their experiences when they do their homeworks for each of these, um, strategies, all the students sort of learn together as it were, right? So we could see examples on WeChat um, and, and, and so on and so forth. I mean, more recently, when, I, when I, I'm doing the IKEA case study on the access strategy standpoint, IKEA recently um, joining the Alibaba um, platform, which is, you know, that's a big step forward for IKEA because it's not, you know, it had a bit of an experiment with the um, Amazon platform for a while, withdrew itself, but has now realized in China, it needs to not only have a presence on WeChat, have its own online presence, but it needs to be on Te Teobeo, um, sorry if I mispronounced that, um, and so forth. So to the extent that we have students from China in the program, Yes, we do absolutely um, cover this content, but we don't have a separate module that examines the different social media platforms that have developed behind the, the, the great firewall of China. We recognize that that's, um, there's some super interesting stuff um, certainly going on there. Um, hello, the weekly activities and tasks will be triggered by an email, just a way to make sure nothing is missed. Yes. Um, Sieg, you should always be getting emails each week when the new content is updated um, and the modules updated. What you'll find is, I, I forget uh, which day of the week the program starts, but then it'll be consistent that time, that day, the beginning. Um, so it could be on a, a Thursday or it could be on a Wednesday or whatever it is, but you should absolutely know that through your um, email um, for sure. Um, Okay, that's that. How likely is it for someone to get a marketing job after this course? Jamie, yeah, well, I would imagine there's several people taking courses like this because they're trying to switch careers, switch industries. Maybe they're trying to get a job now because they've been laid off through COVID-19 and so forth. I think you, you, you get two things out of taking a course like this. One is you get knowledge. Right. And I don't want to understate that. I think that's fundamentally important, especially sort of in this sort of digital uh, world. You've got to learn a lot about what's going on to sort of even just have the language and the jargon and understanding at that level. But you also get a certificate that includes Columbia Business School, which has to be helpful. Right. Um, you're, you're getting you're, you're, you're learning from um, Columbia Business School. So it has to be that has to be very, um, very helpful. I would also say the um, the network that you join after this program uh, should enable and, and help serve as a platform to network and further engage um, with with others. But you will um, hopefully uh, network and engage with others. Join the program. We all share LinkedIn. And details and so on and so forth to sort of try to help each other along. We also have a LinkedIn group for people that finish this program and so on and so forth. Yana asks, can you please give some examples of what job positions um, the knowledge we get this program is more or less applicable for? For example, marketing digital channel manager, digital marketing manager, others. What I would say, um, Yana, without going into specific detail of a job title, um, this course is quite strategic in its approach. So it's sort of almost targeted it's sort of a more of a higher level uh, marketing folk than the, the fundamentals that, 
than those just starting out at a very tactical, tactical level. Um, that said, I'm a big believer, you really need to understand strategy as a whole, and then you can figure out the right tactics to enable a strategy, right? Um, but, um, but yeah, I would say it has a more of a strategic flavor to it than, than perhaps another course that might have a bit more of the tactical um, point of view. Um, but it's applicable wherever you are, I think, in, in your, in, in your um, you know, work life, as it were. Um, because if you're first starting out, it enables you to understand the strategy so you can understand the managers and folks you're having to engage and talk to. Um, but if you are obviously moving and you're further up in, in the organization, then clearly this is the stuff you need to know. You need to be very strategic about what you're doing. Um, so anyway, hopefully um, that, that helps. Um, after completing the certificate and you want to do a master's in digital marketing, how likely is it that I can apply to get into Columbia Business School through the master's program? Orlando, I'm not sure that this is the, a, a necessarily the right stepping stone to to curry favor with the admissions folks at columbia business school for the master's program i don't know that um, but again what does attending this program do it shows columbia business school that you have a certain body of knowledge uh, taught by one of its um astound you know outstanding faculty so that has to be um, a benefit um, but you know i don't think necessarily it will reduce your requirement in the program but it will certainly help sort of shed some light on what what foundational knowledge um, that you have in terms of preparation for um, the program okay i think i've answered all the questions in the q a so i would say if you do have any more questions um post them now either into the q a or into the chat um, I'm just trying to think if, if there are any other um, sort of general questions I might have missed. Again, you have access to all this content for a year. Um, after a year from the beginning of the course, you can always come back and review and, 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 and re-look at stuff um, later on. And, um, and yeah, I think that is really all I have to cover. Again, I've taught this subject matter for lots of years. It's a privilege for me to be a course leader on a program like this. Obviously it is because it's Columbia Business School, um, but nevertheless, um, to, to you know, engage with content that I truly believe in um, and can get excited about. And you know, again, I'm preparing for, for a debrief tomorrow for the IKEA Connect strategy, and I will put hours and hours and hours of work into that one hour debrief session and i love it i mean i really do um, i think sometimes it drives my wife a little nuts that i like to work so hard on that stuff but you work hard on stuff you're passionate about right so hopefully um, that helps okay a couple more questions have come into the q a um, from florentia is this course recommended for students new to digital marketing florentia yes i would say so um, in as much as we do have folks that maybe they've come from the finance sector or just some unrelated sector, but they want to have, they want to learn about digital marketing and maybe they want to make it as part of their next career decision or next move forward or whatever it might be. So we'll have folks that are using this course as a top up. Maybe they do traditional marketing. They need a better sense of digital marketing as a layer on top of traditional marketing, but we'll also get folks outside of marketing completely looking at a program like this. I'm a big believer, and I hate to say this, you know, on, on, a, on, a, on a webinar about, you know, trying to sell the idea of do, doing marketing, this and the other. But I think marketing itself is common sense, right? All marketing is, is know your customer, understand your customer, deliver what your customer wants understand that relationship. That's what marketing is. We can write massive textbooks on how you do all this stuff, but that's what marketing is. So again, that's common sense. The brand that knows its customer the best and can serve its customer the best is the brand that wins in the marketplace, right? Um, so um, can someone that's unfamiliar with marketing get their head around that very fundamental concept? 
absolutely they can. Can they then learn about how to navigate the digital um, social media strategies and the, you know, all these different things? I think absolutely. And lots of us already have experience as consumers of social media, right? So you already understand a lot of the stuff on the consumer side. Now we're looking at it from the brand side. So I think for sure um, yeah, you can do that. Um, you know, I, I make marketing sound quite simple, but when you uncover some of these layers, then you start looking at, again, things like machine learning, artificial intelligence. But again, all that is, is who understands their customers better? And you can do that better now with things like big data and machine learning and so on and so forth. Um, so it's all, I think, super fascinating stuff. Um, but yeah, I also think it's quite accessible. Um, and the beautiful thing about it, and almost ironically, we all have access to Google, so we can all learn, right? So Google, Wikipedia, I mean, they're all fantastic to enable us to find additional resources, to learn additional concepts, and so on and so forth. So Melissa asks, would you say that there isn't a single industry field that now doesn't utilize digital marketing at some level, online presence, essential social media, a new primary means of communication? I would agree with absolutely all of that, Melissa except the idea that social media is our primary means of communication. I think in a lot of cases that might well be the case. I don't know that necessarily that's always going to be the case. Um, in B2B marketing, um, you're going to have some different strategies and so forth, which may include social media, but may not. B2B marketing might actually be more about traditional online forums, setting up an online community on your own platform rather than on Facebook or whatever it might be. Um, but I'd certainly agree with the, your, your initial um, se um, sentiment. Um, would you say there is, now that doesn't utilize digital marketing at some level, they, yeah, pretty much at, at all levels we use digital marketing. I mean, a simple statistic. When I first started teaching digital marketing, less than 5% of um, advertising was digital. It was considered a niche. Bill Gates said the internet was a fad, et cetera, et cetera. Things have drastically changed. If you look now in terms of advertising, more than 50% of advertising is online. If you look at online advertising, more than 50% of online advertising is mobile. I mean, this is now huge. And that's just advertising, which is one element of marketing. I would say there's a lots of other stuff in marketing that's gone online that we just couldn't do before. Um, so it's absolutely fascinating. Um, let's, um, I've got two more questions I'll get to. We've got two or three more minutes. Um, Anna asks, I would like to improve my customer loyalty to increase my sales in retail skincare. My competition is online offers. I do have um, daily um, over 2,000 customers. That's good. Um, I do text, but uh, would talk about retail digital marketing. I mean, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> without going into detail, Anna, I got to think that you, you'll learn a lot from a program like this, especially being able to look at it strategically as well as then um, um, tactically under the strategy. Um, Lisa, I also need help in tactical approach such as Canva. Should I supplement with other courses? on these uh, yeah we won't go into detail on a particular platform like canva so if you're looking at, at stuff focused particularly on um, canva um, there's probably um, other resources that you can do we're going to look at more of a strategic approach we're going to touch on a, a lot of different platforms um, but canva yeah lisa um, you 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 would want to look at um, probably elsewhere for, for knowledge specific um, to that I want to thank you very much for your attendance, very much for your questions um, and, and engagement. Um, if, um, you know, obviously I would like to see you in the program. If I do see you in the program, in the introductory webinar, I will be hosting that introductory webinar, um, which is absolutely a lot of fun um, to get going. As we said, the course itself starts on August 25, so it comes up very, very quickly. Um, again, thank you very much for your attendance. Best of luck, uh, whatever your choices are. And, um, and, and again, um, most specifically, um, stay safe um, during these um, very, um, very strange, strange times. So um, again, thank you very much.
good luck everyone and, and, and best wishes and hopefully I'll see a few of you um, in um, what, what is what, a week and a half or, or whatever it might be today, but August 25 is start day. Thanks a lot everybody, take care.